One of the great advantages of these multifamily syndications is oftentimes an investor can come in with a $100,000 um, contribution and they might get an $80,000 deduction that same year. So they're getting almost dollar for dollar back in terms of what they're putting into the deal. So it's a great opportunity to raise money and, and help out the investor. I love it. I love it. Now, is it also true that like, let's say you... Is it also true that like, let's say you bought the asset in November uh, of last year. Okay. So do you get to get the whole year effect or do you get only from November to December, like just two months of the cost seg dollars? So on the bonus depreciation, any of those five, seven or 15 year, you can buy it on December 31st and you still get 100% of that. That's Your what long- I heard. Yeah. yeah. Your long-term asset, the 27-year bucket, that gets prorated over how many months you've owned it. I like, got you. Yeah, but the 5, 7, and 15, you get all of that in the first year, which let me just mention, that's usually around 30% of yes. your structure. And so you're getting, if I buy a $10 million asset, let's say I buy a $12 million asset at the end of the year, 2021. And let's say land is worth 200,000. So I have a million dollars worth or $10 million worth of asset. Let me back up. Land is worth 2 million. (laughs) So I have $10 million worth of asset. I can essentially plan on about a $3 million write-off, even though I've only owned that property for one day, because we're going to segregate about 30% of those assets into that short five, seven or 15 year bucket. Right. You get to take all of that, even though you've only owned it for one day, you get to take all of that on your next tax return. I love that. I love that. You know, I'm just thinking I already sent the K-1s out, but I thought it was only five years you get the whole bonus. But then on five and seven and 15, maybe or 15, I only took like divided by 15. So one fifteenth. Oh no! I should have taken the whole 15 also. Right. Yeah. You're five, seven and 15 because bonus applies to anything under 20 years. So okay. any asset class under 20 years is eligible for bonus and you only have to own it for a single day and you get the whole thing. Excellent. Excellent. Oh my gosh. So I know we're not going to go back in, but can I capture it next year or no? Like yeah. bonus is only for first year. Uh, since I missed it in the 15 category, I think probably I could have taken a lot more deduction this past year, Right. Right. which I didn't take. I only took one fifteenth of, maybe it's a separate question, but can I recapture it in the second year return, I guess? You no, know? no. So that once you've established that method, you're going to take one fifteenth every year for the next year. Okay. You opted okay. out a bonus on that. Correct? Okay. 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 No problem. Hey guys, don't do the mistake like I did. See, that's <laughs> no, why good. I have Eric, you know, <laughs> professional kind of sharing. I wish I had this conversation before, you know, my taxations were done two weeks back. <laughs> no, you're good, Vinny. No problem. No, no. <laughs> Thank you. But, you know, let's just talk about this is amazing, you know, that, hey, guys, you could buy asset a day before the closing of the year, right? You know, December 31st, but you get the whole year effect, which I thought I I heard it and knew, but my CP was telling me something different. I couldn't believe it. But anyway, that was really great. The second thing is that, you know, you got to really do cost segregation for a smaller level. Right. I mean, I just said, if the house is 220000 and you're able to depreciate almost, you know, 30000 of that asset, 2200 or something, I remember, right? You mentioned yeah. it could be 22000 2500 or whatever, but you're saving 10000 in taxes. It's well worth it. Well Absolutely. Worth it. Yeah. You and know? I just want to touch on one other thing, Vinny, that Please. We, we often get asked about. And that's the recapture tax. A lot of um, investors have heard of cost segregation, but they always say, well, Eric, when I sell the asset, don't I just have to pay all that back in terms of capital gains? And Yeah, yeah. And I just wanted to touch on that for a second, because I think it's important. And I'll try and keep this as high level as I can without getting too far into the weeds. But if you don't do cost segregation, and let's say you buy an asset for 10 million and you sell it five years later for 20 million. Sure. So it doubles in value over five years. When you go to settle up with the IRS on that, 
they're going to say, okay, well, your asset went from 10 to 20 million. And so we're going to charge you, we're going to charge you on that gain, the full gain. And what you're telling the IRS essentially is that everything doubled in value. You're telling them your land is worth double, your walls are worth double. And guess what? So is your dirty old carpet. Well, your carpet's not worth double. Your carpet didn't go from, you know, a hundred thousand to two hundred thousand. It went down in value. Carpet doesn't double over time in value. Carpet goes right. down in value. But right. when you don't do cost segregation, there's no way to break that out. And so you have to tell the IRS that everything doubled in value. So that's one of the extra benefits when you're when you're doing cost segregation. You're not only saving the money up front and you have access to that cash flow. But also on the back end, you're saving yourself a lot of tax dollars by allocating the sales price to the right buckets. And just remember that don't ever sell your carpet for more than you bought it for five mm -hmm. years earlier. But if you don't have carpet broken out, you just have one big lump sum that doubled in value. You're essentially saying that everything doubled in value. Your appliances are worth double. Your carpet's worth double. Your cabinets are worth double. But that stuff all goes down in value. It doesn't go up in value. And so that's just one of the extra benefits. So how would you do that, Eric? I'm glad you brought it up. So if I'm selling it to a new buyer, right. this asset at 20 million, I pay 10. Of course, I will also increase the value by putting money in, you know, CapEx and budget right. and all that. That raises the value, right? You know, right. the base, I call it. Yep. But then there is this depreciation, which is a paper loss that I have to recapture. Right. So right? yeah, that's exactly right. So when you sell the asset, you pay two taxes. You pay tax on the amount of depreciation you've taken in the form of recapture, uh -huh. and you pay tax on the gain, which is your capital gain tax. However, when you do a cost seg study, the whole benefit of a cost seg study is I'm going to take my deductions today against my ordinary income. Let's say I'm in a 37% tax bracket. Mm -hmm. so I'm going to take my deductions at 37%. And in five years, when I sell my asset, I'm going to pay it back at a 20% capital gain rate. Yes. And I'm going to save the spread. Yes. Guess what? Hi, you are listening to Syndication Made Easy Podcast. We will be right back after this short break. Hi, thank you so much. This is Vinny Chopra and thank you for subscribing to my podcast and uh, YouTube channel and Facebook pages and all the great things and LinkedIn connect with me. I come live to you every Friday at 9.30 Pacific with Vinny and Bo show. Please also look at that and also the podcast, which is my uh, apartment syndication made easy. The book I wrote to a couple of years back became international top seller uh, on Amazon International now. And then we like to bring great guests for you every week or a, twice a week sometime to give you a lot of great knowledge. So please subscribe. You give us five star reviews on the iTunes. The better the guests we can, you know, bring and our ranking will go higher also. Thanks again for uh, following us and really getting the most out of it please comment like share because we would love to bring better and better material for you yes guess what Vinny? i'm not paying it all back i'm only paying some of it back because i've owned the building for five years so what are my five-year assets worth after owning it for five years zero zero they're yeah. not worth anything and so you don't have to pay recapture on your five-year assets because you're not selling them for a gain you're selling them for book value which is zero and so that's one of the often misunderstood benefits is, and I'll, and I'll kind of summarize this, take your deduction at a high level, pay back a portion at a lower rate at a future date and save the spread. And that portion is dependent upon how long you've owned it. The longer you own it, the smaller that portion is. I love that. I love that. But let me put it this way too, then. I mean, if we took cost segregation uh, in this case, for example, in five years, now the base has fallen from 10 million asset to 5 million. Right. Do we not have to capture the whole 5 million that we took it as depreciation, accelerated depreciation, we could call it? And now my base is from 5 million to 20 million. Right. So the gain is 15 million. Isn't that right? Right. 
Right. But remember your, your recapture, you don't have to pay the recapture law states that you pay recapture on the gain of the sell or the amount of depreciation, whichever is less. So what are you going to sell your five-year assets for? You're going to sell them for some CPAs who are on the aggressive side will say, well, the book value is zero. So I'm selling it for zero. So when you make that, there's a form you fill out when you have a sell and you have to allocate the price to the different to the different categories, you're saying that my five-year assets, I'm selling them to you for nothing. I'm giving them to you because they're worth nothing. They're worth zero. Now, most CPAs will put some value to those five-year assets, even if you've owned them for five years, because even though it's a dirty old carpet, it's still worth something, but it's certainly not worth what you paid for it when you bought the building. And so you get to reduce the amount of depreciation recapture you pay by however much the reduction is in the, in the cost of that asset. So again, let's say you bought the building for 10 million and we came in and did a cost sake study and we said of that 10 million, 500,000 of that is for carpet. And we'll mm -hmm. use carpet, I use carpet a lot as an example, but we'll use yeah, carpet. Yeah. So we're sure. using carpet as an example. Well, when you sell that asset, that carpet, you've fully depreciated it. So it's got a book value of zero. Its basis is down to zero. Right. When you sell it, you're not going to sell it for five hundred thousand. You're going to sell it for, let's say, ten percent of the value. So let's say you're selling it for fifty thousand. Fifty thousand, yeah. But then you're paying a gain. Excuse me. You don't. Have, you're only recapturing what you've taken out of that uh, out of that carpet. And so again, take your deduction at the high at the high rate of your ordinary income, mm -hmm. pick it back up as a recapture or capital gain, and save the spread. And you're not picking all of it up. You're only picking that portion up because again. Your seven-year assets in that example, they only have two sevenths worth of value left because you've depreciated them for five years. Yeah, exactly. Your five-year assets have zero value. And so um, that's, again, one of the ways to manage the recapture is upon sale is by doing these cost sake studies and, and being able to allocate your sales price to the right bucket. Um, Excellent. And so I know that's a lot, and I don't want to get too far in the weeds. Yes. So you remember anything, Vinny. Don't sell your dirty carpet for more than you bought it for. I and if you're not that. doing cost segregation, that's what you're doing. You're selling that dirty carpet for more than you bought it for. If your building goes up in value, that carpet is stuck in that building. And so you're saying everything doubled in value. Excellent. Excellent. Oh, my gosh. This will be amazing. I think it'll be great, uh, you know, to even have you come in one of my mastery class, mastermind, and kind of, you know, and I'll, I'll have my students, you know, watch this also tape, yeah. which is very, very good. So let me ask you a question. I've seen some syndicators promote, hey, we're going to give you 79 percent. Uh, you know, uh, cost segregation or negative or something. How can they do that? Yeah, tell me. Yeah, so I think what they're what they're advertising is is again the kind of that example I was giving you. If I'm in a, if I'm looking for investors and I say, okay, John, I, if you give me a hundred thousand for my project, I'm going to give you let's say eighty thousand back in terms of depreciation. Yeah, and you're like, well, how's that even possible? Well, the whole key is leverage, right? You're leveraging the deal. So if I'm buying a, let's say, uh, and you know this better than I do, Vinny, what's the down payment on a $10 million apartment building? Oh, you know, 30% down, let's okay, say. Okay, 30%. Right? Yeah, 30%. So that means I've got to raise 3 million, right? Yep. So yep. I got a $3 million raise. But when you do the cost segregation study, you don't do it on the 3 million, you do it on the whole purchase price. Yes. Minus the land. Correct. And so we're getting our deduction based off in that example, let's say 8 million, and we get to then filter that back through our investors. And so they can, at, in times, depending on how the, the deal is structured and how much debt is in the deal, at times you can get somewhere around 80% of that initial investment back in, in the way of a write-off in the first year. I love it. I love it. So it's the leverage factor. Right. It's not that they are really getting whole cost segregation dollars, which right. is about 30 percent, you said. Right. You know, right. but due to the leverage, it's becoming 60 or 80 or whatever percentage it is. I got yeah. it. So yeah. it's, you know, which and then the other effect is that you are uh, if you even count the sales side, because right. it's only capital gain at 20 percent, not 30 9.5% or something, right. that leverage or that differential also bumps it up. 
Yep, you absolutely. Know? You got it. You got it, yeah, Vinny. Yeah, yeah. I love it. I love it. Fabulous. You know, Eric, you've been a bundle of great, great knowledge, brother. This is amazing. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Oh, you asked no. great questions. It's been a pleasure being here. Oh, no, thank you. Thank you so much. You know, let me ask you a question. Uh, sure. You know, how do you motivate yourself? How do you give back to the community? Any books you're reading or things I like to sure. ask? I'll, yeah. Sure. So I will say, um, you know, one of my favorite books and and I've gotten since I've taken I've been in this position, I've gotten very um, interested in tax law and the taxes yeah. we pay. I see so many people overpaying in tax yeah. and the government, the tax code, our tax code here in America is very complicated. It's thousands of pages. Mm-hmm. Um, but if you really dive into and look at what the government's trying to accomplish, they the tax code is written to give us benefits to do what they want us to do. Yeah. And so if you can start to read through the tax code and say, okay, they want us to invest in real estate because it creates jobs, it creates money. There's a number of reasons. And so the tax code is very favorable to real estate investors. And so one of my favorite books that I always recommend if people haven't read it is, um, it's by a gentleman named Tom Wilwright. It's Tax-Free Wealth. Oh, yeah, I have it. Oh, yeah. Do you? yeah. Tom no, is amazing a... with Robert Kiyosaki yeah, yeah. and yeah. the whole group. He's a great guy. I yeah, Tom Wilwright, I believe he does. Show. Yeah. Yeah, right. he's um he does he's the CPA for Robert Kiyosaki and yep. mm-hmm. um it's just a it's just a great book on on looking at things differently on why we're able to take some of these deductions and so that's one book I would I would recommend. What was the name of it, please? It's called Tax Free Wealth by Tom. Oh, Tax Free Wealth. Yeah, I guys, please. So I, I know it's available on Amazon and it's a quick read, but it really gets down to the basics of of being able to set yourself up for long term wealth because remember, Vinny. I look at this right now and I, I tell investors all the time, you're going to pay it either way. So if I have, if I have a hundred thousand dollar tax bill, yeah, I'm yeah. going to have to come out of pocket a hundred thousand. Why, why give that to the IRS when yeah. I can take that hundred thousand and go invest it in a new asset totally. and create long-term wealth. Either way, I got to come out of pocket for it. So give it to the IRS or put it in an asset that's creating cash and long-term wealth for you. Which one are you going to do? For and sure. so, um, anyways, that's just one great book that I, I would recommend to your to your. Love reader. it, love it, love it. No, this is a, so many great nuggets you have shared, Eric. It's such a pleasure to hang out with you, and you know I'm so glad you made the time on Friday. You know, and I will be providing you the footage and everything, and promoting it. And you know, uh, how can people reach you? Yeah. Yeah. No. So the best way to reach me um, is to go to um, our website. It's just www.costsegauthority.com. Mm-hmm. Uh, my contact information is on there as well as we do a free benefit analysis. If anyone sure. wants us to look at their asset, we'd be happy to provide you some initial numbers. Sure. Uh, but would love, please use us as a resource. If you guys have any questions, if your viewers have any questions, um, don't ask me questions about child tax credits or earned business income because that's way yes. above my head. But if you've got questions on depreciation or real estate tax um, questions, please feel free to give us a call. We'd, we'd be happy to, to be a resource. You know, we don't charge by the hour or anything crazy like that. Just call and we're happy Love to help it. any way we can. Excellent. Excellent. No, thank you, Eric. It's such a pleasure to have you guys. If you like the nuggets today, I mean, a lot of great nuggets. I mean, I, if I were you, I'll even rewind it and then listen and watch it again. Cause there were so many great things, revelations that we might be leaving money on the table. I'm telling you, you know, in paying more taxes and not doing cost segregation and not taking bonus depreciation like me, silly me. I think I messed up. You know, I took the five year one, but didn't take the 15 year one. And that would have given my, you know, more taxation, uh, you know, losses for my myself and my, you know, investors and all. But, you know, hey, life is such, you know. (laughs) So, (laughs) But please give us five star reviews, share, subscribe to our channel. And again, I love to read every single, you know, comments that you give me on my iTunes and Spotify and all that. So thank you for spending time with me and my guest, Eric. And it's such a pleasure. Thank you so much, Eric. And God bless you and keep up the great work, brother. And right. uh, sometime we'll meet some convention or someplace. Yes, uh, I'm looking forward to meeting you in person. Thank, thank you. Vin. you. It's been Thank a pleasure. you so much. I appreciate it.